Um, hey, this is Kiani. I'm a UX researcher, graduate student, and volunteer for the User Experience Professionals Association. We're prepping for our annual conference that takes place on June 25th through 27th in Scottsdale, Arizona. We have a great lineup of courses, talks, keynotes, posters, networking, and just lots of fun stuff planned for this year's conference. Today, I'm talking with Mike Ryan, who will be teaching one of the courses. Um, hi, Mike. Hello, Kiani. How you doing? I'm doing great. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, where are you joining us from? Oh, uh, I live in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, or south of Boston, Massachusetts, and yeah. Awesome. Um, to get started, I would like you to tell us a little bit about your background. Um, we want to know more about your UX story. Um, I'd like to know where, how you got started in UX and what you're up to these days. Yeah, okay. Great. So, um, so thanks for giving me the time and having me on here. It's awesome. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so I'm a little nervous, but <laughs> it should be fine. I know UX people are very forgiving. Um, so, uh, so my background is um, I went to I went to college for communications, um, and I did a lot of um, graphic design work when I was in college, especially at the um, the, the college newspaper. Um, which is like a daily paper. Um, so that so that led me into um, a, a jobs of doing graphic design for mainly for um, for print for newspapers, books, advertising, things like that. Um, and um, eventually, I got pulled into um, doing interactive media, um, which I found much more exciting, and there weren't a lot of people um, who who were doing it um, and you know I was teaching myself a lot of like how to do that sort of thing um, and then I worked at some agencies for a while um, and then I worked um, independently um, as a freelancer for about six years um, and then after that um, basically I got a little bit out of the design part because I was um, I was getting frustrated with how design decisions were made, um, like how, you know, ego would be involved, how, um, you know, how it just was like just the way, the way, the way decisions were made. Um, and I was trying to seek out, like, how do you do good design? How do you sort of um, objectively um, understand what design works and what makes design work? Um, and that's when I discovered like the field of, you know, user research, usability. Um, and I started reading books by, you know, Steve Krug and Jakob Nielsen and things like that. Um, and my next job was sort of like a, a combination between doing the graphic design for um, at Trend Micro um, <clears throat> and then some of the, you know, this, like delving into some of the research part. But that that was really the the research was what I was really interested in. Um, and then um, towards the end of that, I ended up um, wanting to like really pursue that as a career. Um, and I um, went to Bentley, um, ate the, uh, the Human Factors and Information Design Program, um, went and got my master's there. Then I went to, um, um, so that so that was in 2009 when I got that degree. Um, then I went to Thomson Reuters, was doing information architecture and research, but mostly information architecture and design. But I still wanted to really focus on research. <clears throat> so after a few years, um, six years ago, I I went to um, Liberty Mutual as a researcher, um, and I've been doing all all research um, all the time since. Um, since I started, and it's been great. I've been learning a lot um, and doing a lot of different things for research. Um, and in terms of like what I'll be talking about at UXPA, I've been kind of sucked into the the world of of accessibility and inclusive design and learning a lot about that um, and trying to figure out how to do that how, how to do that better at at Liberty. Oh, that's awesome. So we're so lucky to have you as a course instructor. Um, you have so much like knowledge and so much experience. I, it's great that they have you an ex as an instructor at the conference. Um, to piggyback off that, um, 
Oftentimes we hear from aspiring and budding UXers who are seeking advice from individuals like yourself who are seasoned in the field, who have a wealth of experience. Um, mm -hmm. What advice would you give to someone interested in entering the UX field? Um, so I would say, um, I would say two, two things that are the most important, um, I think, are, you know, do, like doing, doing the actual work um, and building the network. Um, so talking about the network, like I would say that, you know, the, 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 you know, UX community is like, is very open and um, we all get along very well. Um, we all seem to want to help each other. It's not really normal, but we do. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like we're, you know, we all like get along really well. Um, and part of it, I think, is just the the um, the personality traits that go into doing UX and UX research is just like people like lift each other up, which is which is great. Um, and because of the big because of that, um, there's also there's a lot of a lot of great. Um, networking opportunities, groups that you can join that are fun and you can learn a lot. Um, and, you know, UXPA is, is one is for, for me is like the premier organization for that, um, both at the, um, the international level and then at the, at the local level uh, in Boston, the UXPA Boston group is, is also very active. And we have a, we have a one day conference um, every year, which is, is at, attended in the same numbers that UXB International is. Um, so, um, but they also have monthly meetings and, and networking events, but there's also, there are other groups, you know, there's the CHI group, there's the, the HR, uh, HFID groups um, and other meetups. So there's a, there's a lot of opportunity for um, the UXers to meet and, and talk, even you know, on social media, they're active um, and very friendly. Um, and lifting each other up so so that so that network is fantastic um it's helped me a lot um and then the and so the, it's, the other part is is doing the work so i think like for me the, the like what i've had to do to get to where i am now is i've had to basically um do do you know and, and my goal being to do user research i had to basically be pushing for you at user research in my role um, for years before I got to the point where I was doing it full time. So, and user research is something that you can do, um, you know, you can do on the side, you can do on, you know, on top of a project. Um, you can just be like, hey, what if we do a, a survey to go along with this to, you know, as, as just like a starting point. And once, once people see like research results, they tend to want more. Um, so, so if you don't have that job yet, then, you know, try, try to do some of that work, um, in your job and then just, you know, develop the skills that you need to, to get to the, to get to your next, um, position and network and, um, it should work, work out, hopefully. Awesome. That's great advice. I love that. I love that advice. Um, next, um, could you give us a sneak peek of your course? The name yeah. of my pre-conference course is Web of Accessibility, Where Do I Start? And it's taking place on June 24th from 6 to 9 p.m. The course is in the Tools and Techniques track. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your course and why people should attend this course? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so the idea behind the workshop is basically giving you a starting point in being able to detect accessibility problems. That's, that's really, that's really the, you know, the main thing about it. Um, accessibility is becoming a more of a hot issue now. Um, lawsuits are up <laughs> and executives are taking notice. Um, and inclusivity has just become more of a hot topic, you know, just in the world politically. Um, so it's, it's part of that. But more importantly, in UX as an industry, it's starting, it's, um, UX is starting to understand the importance of accessibility and inclusive design and the advantages that it brings to everyone. Um, so like two, two big examples that come up a lot is, you know, accessibility pushes for um, high contrast type for readability. Um, and that helps people um, that have low vision, um, 
but it helps everyone when they're trying to read text on a cell phone if they're outside and in you know bright light. So that's a, an example of how how that accessibility standard helps everybody. Another one is um, captioning for videos. So if people have trouble hearing, um, you know, for them to be able to consume the content of video, um, they need closed captioning um, to help them understand that. Um, and but that also brings benefits to everyone. In if they're watching video in in the context where video where audio is unavailable to them or not you know, undesirable, like if they're watching sports or CNN when you're at work or something like that, <laughs> um, you know, that's helpful to them. So accessibility is like, it's intimidating. Like the standards are, are there are a lot of them. They're hard to understand. So the law is confusing. Um, the stakes can be high. Um, and it also can be very difficult to integrate into Agile and get prioritized. Um, so I think it's high, it's common to get to set high expectations um, and then, you know, fail <laughs> those expectations. So, um, so my mantra for accessibility has always been, you know, you should seek improvement, not perfection, um, not compliance, because the work, the work is never got, done. You never get like a seal of approval at the end. Um, you just improve and get better. Um, so what the, work, the workshop really is a dive um, into accessibility and learning how to detect and understand um, accessibility issues. It's not a design course, but it's like a starting point for design because you really, I think you need to understand accessibility issues before you can design inclusively. Um, so yeah, so in, in the, the course, um, we'll learn about, um, learn about different disabilities that people have and, and, um, and how they adapt to those, what kinds of technology um, they use. Um, and then we'll talk about like what accessibility means for digital products. We'll talk about the web content accessibility guidelines um, a bit, get, dive into some of those, talk about some of the like really common problems that people see. Um, and, then, and then the real hands-on work will be um, we'll use a bunch of the different tools that you would use to evaluate um, a website to see how accessible it is. So checking things in code, using a screen reader, um, trying to um, navigate a website with just the keyboard. Um, and then we'll talk about like how you can, you know, then prioritize, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll actually do these things on a subject. Um, and come up with findings and then we'll like prioritize those findings and develop um, recommendations for them. So it'll really give you everything that you need to, to sort of get started, you know, so that you could, coming out of this course, you could go home to your, um, to, you know, what company you're working for, look at the, look at the website and, you know, probably write down 10 accessibility issues and, and hand it off to someone. So that's the idea. Wow. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. It sounds like an exciting course. Uh, yeah. Can't wait to like see how it turns out in the conference. Um, last year um, to last year um, was my first experience with UXPA. Um, mm -hmm. In my opinion, it was an amazing experience. It was loaded with lots of learning, lots of fun, just so many opportunities. In your opinion, why is UXPA 2019 the conference everybody should be attending? Um, well, it's, it's, it's always really, it's always really enjoyable. Um, so I think I've, at this point, I think I've been to nine UXPA conferences and that's with a break in the middle. Like one of my, one of my, um, employers didn't really do conferences. Um, so it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's always been really fun. Um, it's always been an opportunity for me to make connections with, with people that are, um, you know, not in the Boston area that are that are UX related. So I feel like, you know, I know a lot of people around the country um, that do UX that I can that I can reach out to, like folks that are in Silicon Valley, folks that are in London, um, you know, across the world. Because it really is like the big conference for um, for you know user research um, in the world that, that you know that I'm aware of. Um, so it's, it's always, it's always great for the, for the people. Um, 
and the fun activities and it's and it's always I always learn learn things um, the the talks are always like very professional um, and interesting um, and and timely like I've definitely seen like over the years how how some things have have kind of gain prominence or and lost prominence you know as as the uh the market changes you know like last year um really seemed to be like the big push was um was ai and um and um conversational interfaces um which is which is something that is really hot now and and you know it's new so that, so there are not necessarily standards for it so so people are learning those like a lot of that um Another like hot issue that's coming up a lot now in the last few years is you know the like the ethics of design and dark patterns and things like that. Yeah, you know, and then years ago, like say ten years ago, it was like agile. How do we do agile with with um with um you know how do you do UX within an agile framework? So um it, so it's timely. the The content is good. The people are very friendly. Um, yeah, it's always a good time. Oh, awesome, and. We're about to wrap up. Is there yeah. anything else you'd like to share before we end this call? Um, anything else to share? Um, so, yeah. So the another thing I guess is is this will be the third time I've brought my family to <laughs> to the conference. Um, I know someone else who they they bring their significant other enough now that people think that that. That that person works in the industry, um, so so it yeah it's always fun. Like I brought my my wife and kids to to DC. I brought them to Puerto Rico, and then I'm going to be bringing them to Scottsdale, um, Arizona is is somewhere I've never been, um, and and uh, it'll be interesting to see um, like the the stuff around there. We're gonna take some time, so um, it'll be fun. It's like, I love that UXPA is just like a big family that you feel like comfortable enough to even invite your whole family to attend the conference. That's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, like some, some, my daughters will name out certain, certain people that they know is, is, you know, so-and-so going to be there. And I'm like, oh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Good um, time. And Mike, thank you so much for your time. Um, we look forward to seeing you in June in Scottsdale. All right. Thank you, Kiana, Kiani, and, and uh, great to meet you. Have a great day. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.